Thank you. All right. Well, welcome back to the show. Excited to be broadcasting here from CPAC 2020. The next guest is Morgan Zagers. Excited to have her on. Morgan, I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. Uh, my name's Morgan Zegers. I'm from upstate New York, and I'm the founder and CEO of Young Americans Against Socialism. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization where we make educational videos about the dangers and failures of socialism, and we put them on social media for our generation to see and learn from. Awesome. And some of my listeners might recognize your name. Uh, you're the same Morgan Zegers that ran a uh, for position a few years ago. Can you tell my about that? Yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm from upstate New York. It's a very rural area. It's a very conservative area, and I was very involved in veterans advocacy in my community. I was an officer in the Veterans of Foreign Wars Ladies Auxiliary. My dad is a colonel in the um, military and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom, and uh, he was called down the day after 9-11 to serve there. Um, so I was just very involved at the local level, and it wasn't that I was like, oh, I'm going to run for this, and then I'm going to run for a higher office, and then I'm going to run for Congress and be president. I had never had those aspirations, but what happened was just I was involved in the local committee, and then next thing, one thing led to another. They said, we really need somebody with spunk and passion who can shake up this race. Can you run for state assembly? And so I said yes. I mean, I love upstate New York, and Governor Cuomo is very corrupt. I don't know if you or your listeners know much about him, but it's New York is the highest tax state the state and local level we're also the worst state for businesses we one million people have moved out of the state in the last 10 years and it's because it's not a good place to live and so i was like you know what sure i'll throw my hat in the ring and i will run for assembly yeah unfortunately we're all too familiar with uh andrew cuomo (laughs) (laughs) unfortunately uh so that you you just told me uh, before we started that this is your first CPAC. It is. It's my first CPAC, and I speak tomorrow on Friday morning. I'm so excited, and today I did my first experience of Media Row, and so thank you for having me on. It's it's a real pleasure to be here. Yeah. So how is? I know you've been very busy, <laughs> uh, interview after interview after interview. So how has CPAC been so far? You know, being welcomed with open arms. Oh, your first it's been year. wild. I don't I don't know if it's because. They're excited to see young people step up against socialism with an, an actual organization. Um, but everybody since I started in August have been so uh, arms open. And I, I remember when I first did it, Buck Sexton is the first person to have me on and talk on his radio show about what I was doing. Um, Glenn Beck had me on the next day. It was just two, one after another of somebody would hear about what we were doing and want to help me out in any way, whether that was having me on their show or having me on their, their podcast or, or just promoting me on their social media site. And so it really just took off grassroots and we are so thankful for that and so the same vibe has been felt here at CPAC everybody's been very welcoming yes well and and the theme this year is uh, America versus socialism mm-hmm. uh, so it's a very great year you know for to be your first year you're coming here with the young Americans against socialism and you're speaking tomorrow uh, so uh, this is a big year for it we have the front runner of the Democratic Party and avowed socialist Except the Amy Klobuchar, who claims she's not, you know, she doesn't support uh, Bernie Sanders. And they asked the question, how many of you are uh, have a problem with yeah. the and Democratic she, Party? Yeah, and she hesitated yeah, she to hesitated. raise her hand, and, <laughs> but I, I appreciate she made the effort. But, I mean, really, look at her policies. Everyone that's running in the Democratic Party supports socialism. Yeah, they're all so far to the left. It's it's so out of touch with the average American. I'm not worried about the election of 2020. And people have asked me that on Media Row. You know, are you worried Bernie Sanders is going to be elected? I think America is going to wholeheartedly reject socialism at the polls in 2020. I'm more worried about the the deeper roots that are being ingrained into my generation, our generation, uh, that are sowing the seeds of wealth redistribution and and they have what I don't have that's not fair I'm going to use government to take what they have and give it to me and I'm worried that that's slowly being ingrained into the minds of people our age by Bernie Sanders AOC the Democratic Socialists of America all the likes of them yeah you mentioned several people have been asking you about uh if you're worried about Bernie Sanders being elected you know I've heard this before that you know as as much as I want to pull for Bernie Sanders to win because, you know, I feel like, in a way, I feel like he's going to lose so terribly, but if he wins, how bad would I feel, you know, that I pulled for him? So it's almost like you want to pull for Bernie Sanders to win his party's nomination because you know he's going to lose terribly. But then again, it just kind of hurts to even pull for a socialist Well, at the same time, I worry. I mean, people made fun of Donald Trump. They said, I want him to be the nominee so that he will lose automatically. And I think this is different, though. I think um, Donald Trump 
represented something of working Americans, middle class Americans that was felt on a level of appreciation and respect and they appreciated that he was talking about the forgotten man and woman um, while Bernie Sanders is running a campaign on fear mongering about climate change, ending the world in 12 years, a campaign of it's not fair that they have what I don't have, we're going to use government force to take it and I think that's just a losing message and so I, I think it's, it's interesting to compare the two because uh, some say it's both just separate populist movements but I think it's different because his is a negative populist movement and his is based and rooted in jealousy and fear and anti-American values. And so that's why I'm not worried about this specific thing because I know President Trump, it was a rallying force of people showing up at the polls and standing up for American values and a strong economy. And I, like Reagan said, I think the best social program is a job. So that's why I'm a conservative. <laughs> it's why I vote Republican. Even if I don't like the personality, I'll still vote for the policy. All right. And it, if you look at the Republican primaries, uh, the turnout the president's having. Oh, it's with, fascinating. With virtually no opposition. I mean, you got Joe Walsh, no opposition. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really think we have too much to worry about this year. No. Uh, but definitely generations to come, just looking at what young people are supporting in the yeah. young crowd. The seeds Sanders, have been sowed. Unfortunately. So socialism is a crazy idea. And a lot of older generations uh, recognize that, right? But for younger people, do you think that younger people, by and large, are r recognizing that socialism is a crazy, terrible idea? No, and, and this is, I feel optimistic. I, I don't want people to think that Young Americans Against Socialism is some red scare organization trying to rally the right and, and basically just make videos that rally people on the right to donate to us, and then it's like an endless cycle of fear-mongering videos that, that cultivate more donations and so on. Instead, we are really trying to reach out peer-to-peer -peer communication style to the people our age that are in the center and lean left because a, a poll came out, I don't know if you saw this, Victims of Communism, YouGov poll came out saying 70% of people our age would vote for a socialist. Uh, my message about that, my reaction is, okay, but 70% of young Americans do not actually want to seize the means of production. And if you look at the definition in the dictionary of what socialism is, it's the government seizing the means of production, controlling and nationalizing an industry. And that's the socialism Bernie Sanders has been advocating for for decades, but it is not the socialism that Bernie Sanders is telling my generation to support. And so our generation, when they talk about socialism, they think it's just like, oh, health care for everybody, and oh, free college for all, and just nice programs to make society more fair and equal and, and, and moral. And so if they knew the kind of socialism that Bernie Sanders was advocating for would make us like Venezuela and not like Denmark, this would be a different situation, and I doubt that our generation would still support socialism. So we have to equip them with the facts so they can understand when they're being lied to by the far left. So how do we do that? You, you say equip them with the facts, mm -hmm. but it seems like it's just so hard it is. to they reject have facts. a conversation with people on the opposite side today. I mean, both ways. It's almost like yeah. we can't have a conversation anymore, but like you said, Young Americans Against Socialism, that's your job. You're trying to reach out to those yeah. people in the middle or on the other side. How are you doing that? Well, the, the main thing, and I, I try to talk to conservatives about this all the time, we need to stop making fun of young Americans that support socialism because, they again, they don't want to seize the means of production. They don't know what socialism is. They probably never even heard the word seizing the means of production before. Um, they don't they don't know what they're talking about. And that's not to say, you're stupid, you need to think like us, and you need to change your mind. It's instead to say, they were not properly educated in the classroom. They And this is where I break it down. We were taught, I'm sure you remember this, you learned about Castro, you learned about Lenin and Stalin and Mao Zedong and Pol Pot, but you don't learn that these men started as really you know, nice guys from the working class that, that started from the bottom and promised to champion the working man and promised to build a more free and more fair and more equal society, but that just never came to fruition. Instead, all we're taught in school is that these guys were evil dictators and that they starved their people and they had bad intentions, and that was that. You were not taught that they started as socialists who promised a really great utopian society. And so when we weren't taught that in the classroom, now our generation, we hear the same false promises of a, some utopian, attainable society 
society and we don't have any problem with it. No red flags pop up in our minds because we weren't taught to to keep watch for those kind of socialist promises. And that combined with the good intentions that our generation has, because we want to help people, we want to see progress in our country, that ignorance combined with good intentions is putting us in a situation to be completely taken advantage of by the far left radicals that do want to seize the means of production. And so they're lying because they know we're perfectly placed to be used as useful idiots. Um, and so I, I think we need to work on winning over the young people instead of pushing them into the loving arms of Bernie Sanders by making fun of them for supporting an idea and like forcing them out of the movement. Instead, we need to show them the, the positive aspects of capitalism and say, you know what, capitalism isn't perfect, but it allows us to acknowledge our flaws as a society. And then that combined with the democratic process of government is what's going to allow us to move forward, fix our flaws, and progress together. And so I think doing that and also following that up with common sense solutions, both Republican and Democrat, that are rooted in capitalist market uh, policy. I think that's going to be the best way forward. So that's talking about climate change or environmental issues, the student loan crisis, and health care affordability. Mm-hmm. And sorry, I totally just went all in right there. I'm so uh, sorry. <laughs> hey, that's what you're here for. So, you know, I feel like I feel like we well, we've had socialists around for a few years. I mean, Bernie Sanders has been a senator, mm-hmm. and he's ru- he's yeah. ran back in 2016. It's been a slow creep. been around. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, here he is, <laughs> right? And then now, we're all, like, everybody's just talking about this. We're all trying to fight socialism. But even if he loses this year, mm-hmm. you were talking about the 70% of young people who wouldn't mind socialism. We still have a fight ahead, even exactly. even after this election's over. This is long term. This is going to take a very long time, and that's because for decades now we have not properly taught the dangers and the history of socialism to young Americans. And now they're growing up. I mean, millennials. I know that they ma- people make fun of young Americans and call them the millennials, but millennials are now owning homes and having families, and they're in like their 30s and 40s. I'm the last month of the last year millennial. I was born in December 1996, and so a lot of the Zoomers we have to worry about them too. There's now two generations of young Americans that are convinced socialism is a good idea. And so I wish, you know, a lot of older Americans ask me for like one simple answer on how to fix this. And I'm not going to just give them a talking point. Instead, we have to have serious conversations about what went wrong. And I love this book. It's, I think it's called The Morality of Capitalism. In the, you know, the, the foreword of the book, the author and the editor, they say, serious people need to do better. And by that, he means have the hard conversations, figure out beyond the talking points what's going wrong, and work eight by A, B, C, D, E, F, G, figuring out what are the small steps we can take to fix this problem. Because I'm sick of the talking points. I, I mean, I watch Fox News and I watch the, the national pundits all the time. All they say about socialism is, well, if you look at Venezuela, it's always failed. Socialism has never worked. That's all they really go into. And then they just wonder why young Americans don't see that and it's a a really deeper problem than that and we need to have deeper conversations and i feel like nobody's willing to go into that and it's a little frustrating i appreciate the work you're doing with young americans against socialism definitely glad i got connected definitely going to be following that and supporting that uh but for my audience uh, Mm -hmm. i want them to know how to connect follow you and young americans against socialism can you tell them about that of course well what's funny is when i get off the stage from speaking I always have older Americans come up to me and they go, what can I do? Please, can I connect you with my granddaughter? She went off to college for one semester and she came back a total radical (laughs) leftist. Like, can you please talk to her? And usually I'm like, yeah, sure, have her add me on Instagram. But but then I send her to our website. It's yaas.org or fightsocialism.org. They both go to the same site. But if you go to fightsocialism.org, we have them categorized, our videos, by capitalism, socialism, firsthand experiences of socialism. And then we're going to... Over this next year, for 2020, we're breaking down solutions, private solutions for climate change, for health care affordability, and for the student loan crisis. And so the more we can send younger Americans to our website to watch our videos, or even older Americans if they want to see, I think we're going to be in a better place because we work on having more conversational, uh, positive conversations specifically about how we can move forward with common sense solutions for these issues. And uh, so if you go to fightsocialism.org, you can see the videos, or you can donate and help us make more videos. (laughs) Awesome. Fightsocialism.org. And really quick, uh, I'm almost positive you can watch this. what goes on in that ballroom on Twitter. Yes. You're speaking at what time tomorrow? I'm speaking at 10.15 tomorrow, live at CPAC on the main stage. 10.15 tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Morgan Zager is going to be speaking here at CPAC. Excited to have her on. 
Uh, make sure you go check out fightsocialism.org, fight everything else you mentioned. Thank you, Morgan. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Well, we'll be right back in just a moment to conclude. Uh, thank you for listening.